viewpoints, and beliefs presented on this program do not necessarily reflect those of the management, the affiliates, and broadcast partners, or the sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. Gamefest Radio, the radio you can see. The, the day the the day just keeps getting better what I was saying before when you couldn't hear me here um, Linnea's agent contacted me two days ago to tell me that she could not be on camera tonight with this on zoom the problem with that is Gmail did not show me the email it nested it under her email that said thank you so we do not have a guest tonight that being said bring the ladies on we are going to do a tribute to to Linnea Quigley episode because we got an hour to fill, and uh, so that's just where we are. Um, you all talked, say something so I make sure your mics are working. Hello, hello, check, check. <laughs> testes, one, two, testes, uh, one, two. Testes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're, okay. Uh, basically, so that's, well, uh, like I said, I'll try to get an interview rescheduled to do with her. Um, but uh, we're already running now. I need to get the announcements done tonight. And and that's just, that's how things work around here. And, oh, and by the way, the reason I was muted earlier, fans, is because Windows Update today went through after I'd set the show up. And I forgot to double check all of the uh, things. It likes, what Windows Update does to a podcaster is it takes your microphone that you want to use and resets everything to default. My default is not the microphone I use. And that's inside baseball. But what can you do? Um, by the way, everybody, I was had this all planned out. Uh, Linnea was going to be on tonight. I just heard from her agent again. Said, uh, sorry, uh, she could not uh, uh, do the Zoom tonight. The um, we uh, And I don't have the show set up for phone right now because I wasn't planning on it. Um, I was, my plans were to show a, um, uh, one of her trailers and do you all in the chat room realize that nothing she was in from the 1980s has a trailer that you can show in public, uh, without getting, without doing a lot of blurring or anything that, that was my first instinct. Let's blur it. And I said, it'd just be this, this would be what you see. <laughs> So how did you all prep for the show? You all talk amongst yourselves. I'm going to reply to her agent and tell her we'll reschedule a phone interview. Well, right before, I think Joanne, I was telling you right before we went live that I, my entire little post-it uh, universe here is basically just asking her about upcoming projects <laughs> and um, asking her about her experience at the horror cons and, um, you know, today's technology, as far as taking movies from the 80s and redoing them with the CGI that we have now, which ones she would pick. So I that's what I had <laughs> built up. I don't know how to how what questions you were thinking of asking. Initially. What here? Here, I'll handle the interview this way. <laughs> what movies have you seen of Linnea's? And I'll give you my honest opinion of them. OK, do you want to go first, Joanna? Yes, so my favorite would have to be Return of the Living Dead. Good movie. Yes. I'm not going to say it's my favorite of her roles, though. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> I, 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 what was what was her name? Trash in that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That was um. I'm not. It, it was it was good, but I just I didn't feel like she got the screen time that I wanted to see out of her. You well, sure about that one? Well, no, the screen time, was, screen it was, time. I see, I know I, she got a lot of coverage, but I would say she got a lot of screen time. Yeah, um, we'll call it coverage. 
I didn't Orlando. think there was much coverage. Did you, Joanna? <laughs> now, the I one mean, that, has anybody lack of coverage? <laughs> have either of you ladies seen Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers? I haven't no. seen that one. That's okay. If I had been doing an interview with her tonight, that's one I would have watched because it's one. Mm -hmm. It's one that I haven't seen that's considered a classic. But that was the one I went to. I said, "Oh boy, there has to be a PG rated movie trailer for this." And there's not. There wasn't. No, it's like Cinemax After Dark all the way from for the full two <laughs> minutes. And uh, so, yeah, I was, that was in, uh, that was a moment. Uh, N Night of the Demons. Um, I think that was probably the one I enjoyed most from her. Oh, you've even got the lipstick. Oh, Joanna, you were so ready tonight. You were good for the boys. Dang it. <laughs> yes, and, and, and know, Deborah, right, of course, you notice Joanna dressed for the occasion. We were all prepared here. I know. I, it's so so perfect. She would have recognized that right away, too. Oh, yeah. I'll have to do something different next time. I know. <laughs> well, so if, any, so if anyone hasn't seen Night of the Demons... Joanna is dressed as the the one of the main characters from it. So yeah. now maybe it'll inspire people to watch it who haven't seen it. Yeah, it's a great movie. The, there's a remake too, and it's like, eh. <laughs> that lipstick, it, it comes in handy in the movie. So you're going to be, we'll make them curious now, it, about that. Yeah. That's a great a, scene too. I knew there was a sequel. Is there, there's a remake of it? Yes. Was it not that good? I didn't see it. I was not Shannon aware. Elizabeth is in oh, it. She was that okay. Okay. Might American have to Pop check it out. Might have to check it out. Yeah. And then did you like it, Joanna? <laughs> What's that again? Did you did you like the second one? Uh, the remake. I mean, it's okay, but it's like it. You know, of course, it doesn't have the same feeling as the original, the OG, and which, like most things, it's like okay. Well, it was a nice attempt, but no. Okay. <laughs> okay. Worth a watch. Well, yeah. Okay, let's go off topic a little bit. Has anybody seen a remake that they really thought was worth remaking? Um, <laughs> and I'm well, asking in the, the chat room world. too. In the horror world, well, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. People aren't gonna be happy about this one, but I don't think Nightmare on Elm Street the remake no. was that terrible. I don't think it was that terrible. Well, okay, okay now I'm you gotta set that in. in <laughs> In my mind, I separate terrible from need yes. to be made. Halloween. I, that, I thought the Halloween remake was perfect. If it had not been a remake, I thought it was a fine movie. Actually, even because it was a remake, I thought it was a fine movie. And the the reason why is because it makes you... Rob Zombie, I, yeah. the reason I can't watch a lot of his stuff is actually not because I think it's terrible, but because it's it gives you a visceral emotional response, which I normally don't expect from my horror movies. Does that make sense? No, that's exactly why I watch them. I, but I end up feeling like uh, with Halloween and the Danny, the Danny Trejo part, I'm crying. And I'm like, I'm not supposed to be crying on my horror movies like this is not what I that's not what I signed up for so it took many years to rewatch it again but that remake I feel like it really pulled different elements emotional wise that you wouldn't expect so I will I will actually agree with that I'm not yeah. once again if it but because I have to sit there watching it think okay perfect example go out of the horror genre um Roadhouse Oh, Have I you can't even got... do it. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> I I am married. Gregor has a nice ass. So. <laughs> I am like, married to you. one of the biggest That's Patrick worth. Swayze fans in the world, and I love the dude too. I mean, I and it was not okay. First of all, everybody, I'm not saying Roadhouse was high art. It was it was full of cliches. It was full of uh, bullshit that can't happen in the real world. But when you remake the movie. And just fill it with more cliches. And the movie stood on its own and uh, had but had had nudity in the original, uh, which was a boot. But I'm just saying I I'm not saying if I think if that movie had been named Roadhouse the the next generation or Roadhouse right. Florida or whatever, 
In other words, if they had just separated and not called it a remake, I I think I could have accepted it much more. Oh yeah. Well, since we're talking even non horror, I I didn't give Footloose the remake a chance until maybe about a year ago. I was actually impressed. I was impressed, and I dare I say, I thought it was better than the original. Sorry, Kevin Bacon. <laughs> God. Anyway, let's do a commercial break and see if that works. Bombs is a 2024 Scarefest Weekend sponsoring vendor. The Bombs makes bath and body products for everyone. Ashley Dobbs makes unique small batch and painted bath bombs, plus sugar scripts, whip soaps, and body oils. Find the Bombs on Facebook and at the monthly Central Kentucky Mystical Market in Lexington. Scarefest Weekend sponsoring vendors make the event happen. Be sure to tell them that you heard it here on Scarefest TV. And welcome back, everybody, to our show that almost didn't happen, but we're just taking it and flying with it. Uh, Lene could not be with us tonight. Uh, there was a problem with Zoom. So anyway, so we're doing the show. We didn't get the I, I, and I'm taking all the blame, should have went through my email more meticulously, so I could have been prepared. But to so what we're doing, we're talking about uh, Linnea Quigley movies, but right now we're arguing over remakes. And... Uh, I don't guess I've actually seen the new Friday movie. Or oh, Nightmare. Nightmare. 13. Nightmare. I'm sorry, Nightmare. Oh. Movie. Uh, they oh, they all look alike to me. But you just made me think of that, that 2009 Friday the 13th was excellent too. I mean, I had hoped that they would come out with more, but they didn't. They just left it by itself. I don't know why. I, did, I, you, I lost did you watch that one? I thought it, you know, the new ideas were cool, like having the underground tunnels and the bells to alert Jason, like, oh, I've got a victim here I can go get. I thought that was really cool how they came up with that. Awesome. Yeah. And and I, I like that they took it basically from, okay, this is how he got the mask. And it was just like, it, it, it they found a way to take you through like the first, second, third one, but kind of combine it all into that 2009 remake. Mm -hmm. But honestly, that's, he's one of my favorite Jasons. Okay. I thought he did yeah. a great job. That was good. Okay, guys, <laughs> what about, so I, I, it. Oh, <gasps> that's a good one. About, okay. what, what was it? I didn't even hear it. It. Stephen King. Oh. I that remake. <laughs> okay, so, no, I, it's so good. It's just the differences. It's like okay, they um, in the remake. There's more CGI, which I'm not, or there no, there wasn't CGI back then in the '90s. I think that was the '90s, the first miniseries, right? Oh yes, yeah, yeah it was okay. the '90s. Yeah, and then so the remake, of course, it's the CGI, which I'm like, eh, I'm not crazy about, but the way they dig into the characters and give them like the kids and you know give them more depth, I love that. I thought that was That's awesome. And who, who doesn't love Bill Skarsgård? I mean, come on. Although, <laughs> that's right. I forget. I forget yes. you love him because yes. I kept saying like if I could just take Tim Curry and put him into the newer one the newer two chapter one and two i would be curious to see how that would flesh out do you know what i'm saying like because yeah, he's creepy i'm not i'm not saying scars guard wasn't because he did a good job but in the first one he had this weird 
lispy thing going on that he didn't have in the second one because the first one i was like dang it it's distracting me so much and that's not a good thing but it's i will say this the first and second chapter both scared me so much that mm -hmm. i haven't watched them and it's not a bad thing it's that's a good thing that's a compliment to the remake okay. very cool i'm glad yes. to hear that <laughs> But would you have been okay if it had never happened? I I think I always would have wondered, honestly, because, because it was from the 90s. I think I always would have wondered with today's world because really you can't call it a, a horror comedy from the 90s, but it kind of was. Joanna, would you agree with that? Because it wasn't, I mean, yes, it was scary. I'm one that read the book when I was 14 and I'm checking oh. under the bed. Uh, under the bed because it was that good the book was that good the book yes hit the uh, freaking patrick hockstetter scared me more than henry bowers i was like holy crap if oh, you read the book <laughs> yes yes now, I mean, in, now in the chat room they're asking if we support the upcoming crow movie i, 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 at first. I do but i got i got my ass reamed for that because i do so i'm excited to see it I'm going to tell you something at first. This is why you can never, uh, this is why it's always good to have an open mind with remakes because I say, at first I was like, I don't know. I don't know if I want anything to do with that. But then I watched the trailer. Then I saw the trailer and I was like, whoa, they are doing something different with this. This could be really, I mean, you, you almost separate the two because Brandon Lee and him, it's like almost, it's two very different characters. So I think it could end up being something that has a following. See, I, I, now this is a good example. I don't know why they're bothering calling it a remake. Because, okay, you have The Crow. Of course, Brandon couldn't wander around to do a sequel. But then they come up with another Crow movie that retold the story from a, with a new character. And I don't remember if it sucked or not. I, I remember, the, I remember watching it. So why not just do that again? The crow is a is 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 not it's not it's a metaphysical infusion. So in other words, right. you can it doesn't do your belong to just Brandon Lee is what you're saying, right? Why why would and I and not even Brandon Lee? I'm going to say that character that he played, right? Because you can move. In other words, you can take the crow concept and move on. Um, yeah, that's true. In, in in the comic books. How many flashes have there been, everybody? Tell me in the chat room. Somebody probably knows that. The exactly. Flash, uh, the, um, a Ghost Rider? Yeah, yeah. not wrong. As a matter of fact, one. the Ghost Rider movie with Nick Cage was a remake, technically, of when he used to ride a horse. They included it in the original movie. You can make that argument. I did not know this. Wes, you're I just either. all <laughs> kinds of trivia. <laughs> um, um, um. <laughs> Uh, what's his name that you you have such a crush on? Oh, which one? I have the big Sam bushy mustache cowboy. Sam Elliott. Yeah, Sam Elliott. Yummy. See, he was he was the <laughs> Sorry, original Ghost out? Rider. Like we all knew who it was. <laughs> I was thinking out loud. I was like, yes. See, he was a Ghost Rider, <laughs> and then he found Nicolas Cage and taught him what it was to be the Ghost Rider. So you could say it was a movie within a movie, is what I'm saying. Okay. That's fair. I think a lot of things are like that. We just don't want to give them a chance sometimes because it's like, I don't know, kind of like Scream, how Scream came out with the TV show and it wasn't even the right mask. Don't get me started, but yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I did try to give that a chance, but it was total trash. <laughs> and that's another thing. Okay, uh, Renee in the chat room says, what if they would just start calling these things reimagination? Oh, Quit that's calling them remakes. Because that, at like least, that. okay, at least that way you're not, I don't think we would be as offended if they reimagined something that we held dear to our heart. True. Yeah, that's a good point. And then, and of course, you, you can remake zombie movies all day long and nobody even notice because they just all look like anyway. Speaking of zombie movies, <laughs> the fact that, We'll bring it back to Linnea. So uh, the fact that Return of the Living Dead was her breakout role. Mm -hmm. What other zombie movies have you guys seen that stick with you? 
Honestly, the newer <laughs> a newer one, Train to Busan, I was shocked. That was so good. I've heard I that it's very good. It. I have not seen it. Okay, it was amazing. I was shocked that I, I didn't expect. I, I it was I didn't even hear. I was, was just scrolling through a few years ago, and I was like, oh, I'll give this a chance, and. It was amazing. It, my anxiety was so amplified. I was like, oh my God, are they going to make it through? Ah. It was it was amazing. What is that streaming on? Oh it was gosh, on Netflix. It was on Netflix for a while, then it was on Prime. It kind of bounces back and forth because it, it's probably you know, on Tubi by now. I, watch, okay. I, I pay all this money to subscribe to these damn things and spend two thirds of my time watching Tubi. Do you really? Yes. <laughs> I think it was on Tubi too. Um, <laughs> That and uh, and 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 now all of a sudden, of course, it's part of Prime, but Freebie, which is the free version of Prime, apparently okay. they they take like the okay. four sweepings from Prime and put it over on Freebie, and yeah, but yeah, they're in words there. You can spend a you can see a lot of. I am not going to subscribe to Peacock. They say it's on Peacock. The movie is asking about, oh, but I I am okay. not subscribing to another goddamn network. Is that's that done. where the Crystal Lake series is going? Because they've they've made that Crystal Lake series, and I that's kind of why I considered Peacock. Because I was like, I really want to see that. Yes, I want to see it too. It look it looks like it could be good, and I agree. I don't know. It is. I think that one is on Peacock. That's one that I have, but um, Shutter is the one that I'm still holding out on. It's like okay. I know that I I know that I could potentially see a lot of good stuff there. But but it's on principle. Like, it, what is it, six or seven dollars a month? But it's the principle of the fact that I do not need one more app. So I'm well, with that's, you. Uh, I hear you. <laughs> I actually have Shutter and never watch it because the ninety percent. Okay, I watch a lot of horror movies, but first of all, I've watched sixty one. No, actually sixty as of today in the film festival. So there, nobody can say I don't watch horror movies. But when I'm watching them for the show. I just go on IMDb and see where they're streaming. They're never on Tubi. Uh, on, on Tubi. On um, uh, Shudder. Never. The ones I need to watch are never on Shudder. So I don't watch them. It, that takes up most of my TV time. I was going to say, you do have to watch quite a few on the film festival. You do have yes. to see. And yeah. I'm, such, I'm such a chicken. Because just, you, because I don't know, you had asked me once before, like, "Hey, do you want to be on the on the panel for watching these?" And I, all I could think of was that one movie, <laughs> that one movie, one of them that I had to watch, and it, I'm just gonna say it, it was like some dude's nipple being ripped <laughs> off and fed to him, and I was like, I can't, I can't. <laughs> You're like, I'm good. <laughs> I was like so chicken, like I can't do it. So I said, I don't know, Wes, because when I if I see something that I don't that I don't want to see the rest of, I can turn it off. Whereas with the film festival, you're kind of making a commitment. You have to like, you have to watch. It's like someone's mm -hmm. taping your eyes open. <laughs> oh yeah, I totally um, saw some. What what was that freaking movie? The Clockwork Orange, where they you know they're torturing him and they're holding his eyes open. I yes. totally did that. <laughs> now I will say, and, and I now of course Joanne is new to the uh, film festival judging game, but I will tell you that that's not entirely true. If you're watching one that genuinely sucks, it's okay to skip it. You can turn it off. No, you said what I I start doing something and else usually. Thing. That way I can claim I actually sat through it. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, and then, now I will say the the. Features this year that we've gotten have been exceptional. Very, yes. so a couple of them have been a little boring, but not all the, it's every other year. The first year I, I did it was a year that I was in charge of it was we had incredible, I'm trying to remember which one was first. I have to count backwards. This year, last year it was shorts. We had great shorts. This year, a couple of really good shorts, but the shorts are not knocking my socks off. But the features are TV quality. I watched one just a, a day or two ago, one of the late entries, that was just, I'm like, this should have just went at least straight to DVD. Going through film festivals wow. is just wasting these people's time. Wow. Yeah, it was that good. I mean, I'm kind of excited to see some of them at the Scarefest. It, you should be. You should be. But now, yeah. I... The one that I've, it's so far, it's my favorite for, 
I'm not going to name it because I don't want. I know it's time for commercials. <laughs> um, um, there is a, a short that if it does not win best short, then we got a hell of one coming yet. It is just so good. It's about a girl trying to be an Instagram influencer, and I'll, I'm not going to drop the name on it, but I'm going to tell you, it freaking rocks. Oh, I'm excited. Yes. Nice. All Are right, you waiting every- time, Joanna, on yours? On your viewing? I'm behind. I am oh, very behind. It's not just her. All the other judges are behind. Even Meredith is behind. It rained last week, so I got to catch up, and I've watched nice. everything except one oh. short. No, one one feature. I'm sorry. The one that came in today, I believe, was a feature. He was a so, movie glutton that day. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I mean, but there was a couple of days I was doing email while I was watching. Okay, let's do our commercials and get our announcements out. It's Day's Crypt. Features deals with talents in the horror community, from mask makers, sculptors, artists, and more. Plus, podcast live in the crypt, shooting the shiz with BK and the swag, and BK and the bees, horror buzz. Visit their website, join their Facebook group, and thank them for being a scarefest sponsoring vendor. Are you a fan of horror movies, books, comics, music, and collectibles? Room Org Magazine is for you. Subscribe today to receive 6 or 12 print issues annually and join me, Executive Editor Andrea Subisati, on an ongoing journey through the horror genre of the past, present, and future. Plus, get access to unmissable special editions such as A Century of Witches, 50 Years of Gore Cinema, British horror movies, and so much more. Rumor, the world's premier horror and culture and entertainment magazine since 1997. Accept no substitute. Looky there! Musician, actor, producer, screenwriter, activist, referred to as the hardest working man in horror, Reggie Bannister from our Phantasm reunion. He was in like one through five, something like that. Um, but anyway, he's the intrepid ice cream vendor turned hero in the action horror series. And if you bring Reggie, you're gonna bring Gigi. Gigi Bannister, a, a special effects artist, producer, manager. She's an actress too, but once again, part of our phantasm reunion so there's our announcements tonight phantasm fans we got you covered okay now we're doing still taking staff uh, applications and by the way volunteer applications scarefestweekend.com click the volunteer link you've got a meeting in two weeks yes. two weeks it, it'll be zoom you can zoom it or you can come and meet me in person but we do have a meeting coming up so pay attention staff members Speakers, if you want to speak at Scarefest, we have a really good seminar series, and we've got a whole lot of applications to go through this year. But if you would like to speak on your particular area of interest or expertise, if it's weird and wonderful, we'll try to fit you in. Scarefest 16 speakers, go to scarefestweekend.com and click the speaker link. And as we were talking about, the film festival is taking entries. We're up to 61 now, 61 entries all together. But 61 entries, go to scarefestweekend.com, click the film festival link. And if you are an independent film film director, writer, if you're in a film, if you know somebody with a film, get them in there because we are going to have a heck of a a good um, film festival this year. And we just it just keeps getting better every year. The Central Kentucky Mystical Market is coming up this Sunday, April 14th, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. And that has already changed. That is supposed to be 10 a.m. Mm-hmm. They give me the wrong goddamn banner. Yep. I love this episode. Anyway, I believe it's opening at 10 Sunday. Uh, I'll have to check, double check that. It but is I'm, 10. 10 o'clock, yeah. But please come at 10 o'clock. Please come at 10 o'clock because I will be bored if nobody shows up to 11. Anyway, and I'll be there doing tarot card readings, and I got some Scarefest t-shirts from the last couple of years to uh, to uh, offer you. We do have some uh, mugs, and Anita will be there with her eggs, her country eggs. 
So yeah, Central KY Mystical Market, Clarion Hotel on Newtown Pike. I want to thank my sponsor, Christy Turner, for um, sponsoring my next 5K run. Coming up May 19, 2024, down to, um, 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 that's called Coldstream Park, right? Right across the uh, highway there from the Clarion almost. But anyway, uh, Run for Hope, it is for Mental Health Awareness Month. Uh, break the stigma. But that'll be my next 5K, and she is going to help me get that done. My sleepaway cosplay, sleepaway camp cosplay will be a thing. Premiering with the belly button and everything at FrankenCon. <laughs> so I got that to look forward to. And, and I'm a 52, but if I can get 100, 100 Patreon members, I will do a tramp stamp with that cosplay at Scarefest. Patreon.com slash Scarefest Radio. 25 cents a week, people. 25 cents a week. We're talking about zombies. Zombies. Yeah. Yes. Um. Honestly, I'm a Walking Dead fan. Oh, okay. I am not afraid to say that because it's a free country, and <laughs> I, w- I will not be persecuted. I it it had its spells, like it got a little dull there for a while, and when they first introduced the Negan character, it got depressing as fuck for oh my gosh, season. yes. It was like, oh my god, what is going to happen this week? Oh, you know. But um, uh, I I I thought it redeemed itself, and I found yeah from beginning to end, I really overall I think it's one of the best written stories that you can come up with. Are you watching any of the spinoffs? There's like- uh, no, because they're not on anything that I've got. Hulu yeah. I think might okay. have um um the first spinoff, the okay. the West, the West Coast version. And I did watch the first season of that. Okay. What was the name of that? Uh, uh, gosh, I'm not going to remember now. The oh, the one with Negan and Maggie, right? No, no, no. No, 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 no. See, there was a spinoff oh, before Fear that. Oh, Fear City? Was it Fear City or something? No, 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 uh, no. I can't no. think of it now. Fear City's right. the newest one. Um, it's uh, It basically starts from California. And it shows, in other words, the entire other coast. But it, 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 yeah. Walking. Somebody in the chat room knows. Fear, fear the, the dead. Walking Dead. Fear? Yeah. Oh. Fear, fear the Walking Dead. Fear the Walking Dead. Yes. Thank you okay. in the chat room. <laughs> but I watched what the we first. Do them? <laughs> I watched the first season, maybe season and a half of it. And I don't know if I, I got sidetracked or what, but then it, it just. It wasn't compelling enough to draw me, but I didn't. I think what I didn't like the characters as much. They did, the characters were just not as compelling. Uh, for one thing, they were, I'll say it, uh, uh, Gen X uh, or newer. What's the newest one? Yeah, millennials. Z. Gen, Z. Gen Z. Yeah, they had a lot of Gen Z. They had a lot of Gen Z. It had a lot of Gen Z. Okay. I shouldn't remember the alphabet part. Uh, but yeah, it had a lot of Gen Z references, and and like one of the characters was uh, basically a, 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 a pill popper, and it actually became part of his strength that he knew how to cut oxycodone. And like, oh, Lord. <laughs> you never so, know what your, what skills will be needed in the apocalypse. I will <laughs> grant you that. <laughs> I I will grant you that. I'm counting on on my collection of peanut butter and bullets to get me through. Okay. Hell yeah. Uh, Z Nation, uh, that was a good one. Renee in the chat oh, room. Z Nation, I, I yeah. never finished the series because it was out on streaming, but they kept splitting it up, and you'd have to wait for the next season, and yeah. I never did get back to finish it. Yeah. Were yeah, all... I, I liked it. It, it, it actually uh, it, it served it as, as a distraction because, uh, not to like bring the room down, but... <laughs> When uh, my mother-in-law, when she had uh, a medical episode, which uh, she passed within two days, but we we burned through like a, a bunch of episodes right around that time because we just we wanted to just not think about anything else and why not just watch zombies? If you if you're stressed or feeling sad, let's just watch zombies that are eating people. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the only thing about Z Nation. 
Now, I like the less than serious approach that they took, but sometimes I thought it went a little over the top. The, uh-huh. the Like the one yeah. episode, I, for some reason, stands up in my mind, they had zombie raccoons dancing or something like that. <laughs> and I thought that was a little over the top. In other words, I thought they tried sometimes a little too hard to be funny. Yeah. And uh, but uh, but otherwise, I thought it was really cool having somebody that could actually command zombies. I thought that was a cute idea. Yeah, it was very different. I will say. Now I know that this is not really <sighs> twenty-eight days later. It's not really per- zombies per se, but it is one of my hmm. favorite. I don't. I don't. I haven't purchased a lot of things on like the Apple Store as far as like digital movies, but that. Uh, 28 days later and uh is it 28 months later yeah am i thinking of the right yeah those two i did buy digitally because i just thought they were brilliant honestly and killian murphy i think i feel about him the way you do about sarsgaard Yes. <laughs> I feel you there oh my gosh yes. what about Ray? and sandra bullock of- was great in it sandra- <laughs> Okay. <laughs> what were you saying, Joanna? I forgot about Sandra Bullock. I'm like, oh, yes, I have to take a moment for, oh, Sandy. But <laughs> <laughs> what about Resident Evil? Do you, did you guys get into any of those? I I did like the first one. I didn't, I can't remember the, the sequels, though. They didn't really stick with me like the first one did. Yeah. I mean, that thing where the, he, they're going through that hallway and the dude is like, you know which part I'm talking about, don't you? The, the first. Are you talking about the things with the huge liquors with the huge tongues or the main huge I'm thinking of probably well, Nemesis. He was basically That's turned part. into like a cube. He was cubed. Do you remember that? Yeah, when he got the lasers. Yeah, the lasers. Right? Yes. Yeah, the oh, lasers. Yeah. yeah. Like... <laughs> that was a great scene. And yeah, uh, Mila Jovovich, she was amazing in that. Was... She was. Yes. Yeah, you I didn't know. I never did enough. I don't think we talk about that enough. Like women, women that have played complete badasses, and yeah. I mean, come on, yeah, that oh, was a yeah. good one that you brought up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she did, and I know when she's a like a supermodel, and then here she is as badass actress. It's like, oh my gosh, she's amazing. I taking down, do? yes, <laughs> taking down these like people eating things. I don't know. Oh they, yeah, were they really zombies? Were they zombies or were they something else? They. They were zombies because they like they, they fit. Zombies, but it was the T virus that infected right. them and kind of gave them that weird. I'm you know I need to eat people. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> they <laughs> they they fit the diagnosis. I think yeah. I think so. Because yeah. <laughs> when you bite one, if you bite another one, I think after you you infect them with the virus, they turn into one as well. <laughs> so I'm kind of like, yeah, if you get bit by one, you're and you turn into one, I think that's you know. Zombie thing for werewolves, vampires, you know. I can say the res. I enjoyed every movie in the Resident Evil series, but I don't remember looking forward to any of them. Okay. Okay. You know, in other words, it it didn't. They didn't excite me, but they, but it was enjoyable. Um, the one where they're in Vegas, I think, was actually my favorite. Oh my gosh, that was a cool one. Yeah, because I love. The little blonde chick that was on Heroes. I forget who she is. But anyway, yeah, I, I really liked her. Okay. Yeah. Very blonde cool. chick. That's what it says on her IMDb. Blonde <laughs> chick. <laughs> <clears throat> so it is uh, time for our next commercial break. We're buzzing right through it. We are buzzing our right studios through Studios is a Scare Past Weekend sponsoring vendor. Trick or Treat Studios is the one-stop shop for high-quality Halloween and horror. Shop masks, costumes, figures, collectibles, games, and more from your favorite movies. Find Trick or Treat Studios online at trickortreatstudios.com.
Hey, Scared Fest, this is Joe Lewis of Bonehead Weekly with this week's review. I apologize, Spectrum sucks. We had some storms out last week, if you remember, and I couldn't have internet, and it's a long story, but you got a rerun of Thanksgiving. Wes chose that one. Thank you, Wes. Now, this week, I will go out of my way to chase good writing. I love snappy dialogue, good writing. I will stop whatever it is. I've heard so much. Such a film geek. I love The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Amy Sherman Palladino. I love the snappy repartee and the great dialogue. She also created Gilmore Girls. Lisa Frankenstein, the movie I'm reviewing this week, was not something I wanted to see. I was like, I don't care that Diablo Cody wrote it. But it's streaming on Peacock, so if you have Peacock, you can watch it right now. And I've got to tell you, it's not dreadful. In fact, I liked a lot of it. The music's really good. If you're an 80s fan, you're going to love this movie. My one criticism, when somebody asked me when I was about to do this, oh, oh, how was Lisa Frankenstein? I go, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. Still pretty cliche. That's my review. It's one sentence. N pretty good. Well written. The snappy dialogue. Good acting. Funny in places. But still pretty cliche. If you've seen this movie, you've seen it a hundred times in different variations. Like the boyfriend's already dead, or they bring the boyfriend back to life, or the girlfriend's dead and the girlfriend's back to life. It's just about a nerdy lady played by Catherine Newton, who's a fantastic actress in a lot of good things. She's misunderstood in that 80s faction, right? And she somehow or another has a bad experience where she almost gets date raped at a party, which is awful. And she goes to the cemetery she visits all the time to this one particular grave. And she makes a wish. And all of a sudden, this Victorian corpse comes up the next day and uh, hijinks ensue. That's pretty much it. He's missing a few body parts and she has to help him find those. Which doesn't work out well for people who already have the body parts, if you get my drift. It also has one of my crushes in it, uh, Carla Gugino. You've heard me say this before. Not one of the best endings of all time. But basically, things happen, and she starts to... The monster kind of falls in love with her. You can kind of see where this is going 5,000 miles away. She's not in love with the monster. It's just over time. She's actually in love with the school paper editor. I can't say that I highly recommend it, but if you like... Fairly decent dialogue written by the wonderful Diablo Cody, who gave us, um, who won an Oscar for or for Juno. Then you'll like it. If you like a little bit of horror, not too much. This is up to you. There's not a ton of blood. It's PG-13. There's not a lot. You could probably watch it with your semi-teenage kids, right? A little older kids, not with my six-year-old. Quirky little girl. It's right up your alley. It's just I've seen this movie so many times. I've seen it in different variations. So many times. Oh, quirky. Oh, 80s soundtrack. Oh, blah, 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 blah. They made them a lot in the 80s. Should you watch Lisa Frankenstein? I, it's not bad. It's just, I hate doing those scores like I give it a three out of four stars. No, it's just, it's just not fantastic. You should never break your neck to see Lisa Frankenstein. If you have Peacock, though, check out Lisa Frankenstein. Go watch it. It's not a terrible movie. Written by Diablo Cody, who I'm a huge fan. Would I watch this or The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel to get some really snappy character dialogue? Mrs. Maisel, every day. I kind of enjoyed it. It's not terrible. It's worth about an hour and a half if you have Peacock. Hopefully I won't miss another week. That was actually the first week that I've never been able to deliver my review, which is sad. I'm doing this six and a half years, and that was the first week, and damn, apologize, but I hate Spectrum. Hate them. So this is Joe Lewis of Bonehead Weekly. Please send me more of your internets. I need them. Lene is actually trying to join the episode. Oh, oh. <laughs> I got the top Here. of your head now, Lene. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, I can't. Wait, where, are, where am I? <laughs> um, I um, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay, everybody. Ta dum now we're on screen. Um. Oh, okay. Okay, they cut my power so it's dark here. <laughs> no. They've been doing that to the lines, and it's like, oh, man, why did they do it now? So I'm trying to stand in front of a window or something. There you are. Oh, gorgeous. You're beautiful. Yeah. Oh, jeez. I Okay, <laughs> now I get to go back and use all the jokes that I didn't get to use because you weren't at the beginning of the episode. Um, Linnea, okay. I want to tell you, first of all, I'm going to apologize. You've been to Scarefest twice, and I have yes. not got to meet you either time because you always have a goddamn line at your table. Well, that's good, <laughs> but I want to meet you. But, yeah, 
I'm, but everybody, like Felissa, now Felissa's busy. Felissa Rose is busy. But yeah, I can always catch a break. But I would stand down the watch because I don't want to cut a fan off from you uh, and interrupt you uh, because, well, the fans are more important than I am. But then I'd, I'd stand oh, there and I'm going, oh my God, who are all these people? And it was just constant. Oh my gosh. Well, just put your sunglasses on and just go out of the way. <laughs> Mere mortals. And, uh, Mere mortals. <laughs> and the, now the other thing is, okay, our big plans for the episode was I was going to show a trailer of yours. Okay. Oh. And um, do you realize that every movie that you were in in the 80s, the trailers are not PG? Oh, no. Are you serious? <laughs> Uh, Night of the Demons. Ha Night of the Demons has one that's pa has the the official trailer for it was passable, but um, as I worded it, your Texas Chainsaw Hookers trailer, which I think is a great concept for a movie, basically there is more nudity in that two minutes than a Cinemax uh, Night After Dark. Is there really? Oh my gosh! I guess I got used to it and I didn't notice anything different. But I'm oh, just yeah. going to fade into the background. Oh, you'll never fade into the background. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Lene, are you there? I'm here. Are you, okay, Suzanne? I'm here. I'm Joanna, and I'm so glad that you're able to join us. I'm so excited. So, do you guys have sour balls? Oh, my God. Oh, I, I love that. that. You look so cute. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my gosh. So, you are in so many of my favorite horror movies, and it's crazy. For the longest, my favorite franchise is Nightmare on Elm Street. And for the longest time, I had no idea you were a part of that. So, well, part of me is. Yeah, well, the very good part. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my so, God. So part four, you know, you were in the soul scene where you were like a soul and in, uh, stuck inside of Freddy. It looks like you were in like some type of plastic sheeting with covered in goo. So how was that oh. effect achieved? How did they make that happen? They use this stuff called dental dam. And it's like, it's something that you can like, press against and it like molds to your body mm -hmm. and then they they like poured ky jelly all over us oh and my god it, it was like i didn't realize it but ky jelly if you have it on your body like that you start freezing it's it does something it makes i was like so cold Oh my God. And then we had to stand up on these like apple boxes and like lean out. And that's when the whole thing fell over. Oh you no. Know, it, oh my it, God. It was a it was bad. And the 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 dummy they'd made, it was like, I don't know, like two stories tall, and this lady went flying off that was operating the head, and it was we almost hit the cameraman and it was like it was like a stunt. Oh my gosh! I had and no they set idea. It up. They set it up again, and we had to do it again. I was like, "Oh no!" <laughs> oh my gosh! But yeah, that was it. Was an incredible scene, and I just I kicked myself in the ass. I was like, "I cannot believe I did not know that was you for the longest time." I was like, "Oh my gosh!" That was a recent discovery. So then, also on like um, scene, so on uh, Return of the Living Dead, so. One of my um, besties, Joshua Miller, he is a, a super fan of yours. So, um, he, so yes, he loves you so much. He's constantly posting on Facebook. So uh, Return of the Living Dead, he is the one who actually told me that, is it called a, on the scene where you're dancing, is it a Barbie piece? Is that what it's called? Yes, that that's you? what we called it, the Barbie doll appliance. Yes. Okay. You know, a Barbie doll. I didn't look like a woman, and it, I think it freaked out a lot of guys. They were like, what? <laughs> I know. I was like, wow. I was like, that looks a little too perfect. I'm like, what's going on there? I know. <laughs> that then, was weird. That was weird. That was embarrassing. Because you were 
you were really moving. How did that not fly? How, how did it work? How did it not like just fly off? <laughs> well, they glued it on me. It was oh, like, okay. it, it was like a G string. It like, it was like, um, like a G string and they glued it. So it's like, every time I had to go to the restroom, I'd be like, can I be unglued please? <laughs> you know, it was horrible. I couldn't even imagine. And I bet, was that painful to try to take it off or? No, it actually, it wasn't. It wasn't too painful. It's like, okay. I, I had been t tortured so much. It was like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, with that cold, cold rain and rain machines <laughs> and mud and, you know, oh so it, that was nothing. Okay, good. And then did you get to keep the, the Barbie piece? No, I I had had it with that thing. <laughs> it probably it had gone through hell. <laughs> you know, it, it had just gone through hell. <laughs> oh, I feel you there. Linnea, did you have any costumes or props for any of your movies that were sentimental to you so you got to keep them or maybe took them? <laughs> well, back then it wasn't like, yeah, you, it was like, oh, you can't take anything. And um, we didn't know that they'd be worth a lot. But I did take some of my pieces from Return of the Living Dead, and I sold them. I can't believe I did that. Oh, um, you got to get them back. I know. I've got to buy them back. Oh, it like, like a Linnea museum with all of the <laughs> stuff. I don't know where I'd put it. My dogs would probably end up eating everything. <laughs> At least somebody's got it. Um, I know Beverly, who played Tina, like was going through her attic and just threw out her costume. She kept it, and she just threw it out in the trash. Oh no, that's a tragedy. Yes. That is a tragedy. Oh, <laughs> How many dogs are we up to now? I only have eleven now. Only. <laughs> I I placed um. I had 14 or 15 and I placed them, but I have 11 now. And okay. oh my God, it's a full time job. <laughs> well, Lenny, I do have another question for you since uh, you, so you're an animal advocate. Do you ever, when, because you watch, uh, you obviously watch scary movies too. You don't just start mm -hmm. in them, right? Right. Okay. So have you heard of the website does the dog die.com? I have, yes. Okay, good. Because uh, before you came on, Joanna and I had been talking earlier about how, actually before we even went live, we were talking about how there's movies where we don't even, we get so uh, desensitized to humans dying in these scary movies that we, oh, whatever. But if an animal shows up in the movie, you kind of have an idea like that cat or that dog, there's a reason why they're in the scary movie. They're, they're going to be a sacrifice yes. in some way. So yes. So... I will pause the movie and go check does the dog die.com to make sure because I'm not watching the rest of this if you're going to do something terrible to that poor dog. No, exactly. Exactly. I think the worst one is the John Wick ones, you know? Yes. Oh, oh my, my God. Goodness. That was horrible. My husband hasn't even watched the rest of them because I was. I I saw that it was going to be a bad thing happening. We could yeah. not get the remote fast enough. And so then I'm just crying and it was just a bad night. It was a bad oh. night. That was before does the dog die.com. I know. Thank God they have that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's why I was wondering if you had heard of it. It's a good thing. Well, I'm to glad try. you guys feel that way too. That's so yeah. neat. Yes. Very much. So. Uh, Linnea will be at FrankenCon coming up. May 10th and 11th. And this time, maybe I'll stand in line and just have to shake your hand. And you better you better cut in front of everyone and, and, and I say... I don't believe in doing that. Well, if I see you, I'll grab you. Now, that works. That is perfectly okay. acceptable. That is 100%. Okay. And I'll even buy you an adult beverage if you will, will allow me. Oh, my gosh. An adult <laughs> beverage? Well, the, the, they it's so nice. They have the bar. You have to, like, walk past the bar to even get to the convention, which I think is, like, oh. the greatest idea ever. Oh, my so, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know some people that won't even get to the convention if the bar's there first. 
<laughs> so we've been talking about um, all the torture and stuff that you've gone through behind the scenes. So I also, one of my favorite things to ask, are there any other bloopers or favorite memories that you have from behind the scenes? Oh yeah, there's fun things like when I did Return of the Living Dead, um, my bass player, she was on the set as one of the brides, a uh, zombie bride. And um, she was listening to the extras zombies talk. And they were saying things like, oh, she thinks she's so cool just standing there naked. And it's like, I had no choice but to do that, you know? And, oh you know, God. she was telling me this and I was like, you know, it's just funny because they like are so like, petty and like think you're just standing there naked for fun or something like that and um another one it was it was funny it's on film um on the barn two there was a scene where i like stomp off and am gonna like stomp away mm -hmm. and they didn't tell me not to go through this door and so we were on a set and so I go stomping off and I like get to the door and I open it. And I go to like step and there's no floor. It's like a oh. drop. And I like am hanging onto the doorknob swinging back and forth. Oh my God. I know it's like, so oh, I forgot to tell there's nothing back there. <laughs> so there's a lot of, and like in, um, uh, Oh, uh, Sorority Babes in the Slime Ball Bolorama. The mm -hmm. one girl that I was fighting with was drunk, and she got really violent, and I got my arm really kind of hurt. Oh, from her. no. So it's like you got to be careful. Of course. Oh, my God. Yeah. So when you were talking about um, standing there, you know, <laughs> naked, I know that growing up, you I think you were kind of shy, right? Oh, yeah. So how did you overcome that to just, you know, become the star that you are? Oh, geez. Um, <laughs> suck it up, you know? Um, just every time I do something, I'm shy about it. And okay. I just, like, <clears throat> go, okay, I'm going to just do this. And... Uh, the first time I ever did something like that, I did push-ups to get, you know, my mind off of it. And it seemed to help. It got my adrenaline going and everything. So I just, like, suck it up and go, okay, I'm going to do this. I love that. Very cool. And then you talked about your bassist being there. So I, something that I learned about you, so <laughs> your band is called The Skirts, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, can you tell us more about that? I was so excited to hear about this. Okay, the band has been around since the punk rock days. We were um, underneath the Pussycat Theater rehearsing and stuff at the mask, it was called, on Hollywood Boulevard. And we would see like bands like the Germs come in and the Go-Go's who were really punk rehearsed next to us and the motels and it was it was just a really exciting time and then you know we took a break and then we went and and did like uh some of the la clubs like madame wong's and stuff and we were invited to be in cheech and chong's nice dreams and that was fun as the band it was really fun Oh my gosh, that is so awesome. Is the music, is it available on any kind of um, streaming apps or anything? I think so. I think okay. um, I think you can get it streaming. Okay. Uh, I know that someone wants to put an album out. My problem is I'm having a hard time finding the tapes because the oh, studio okay. lost the the um the you know reel to reel stuff that we we oh, recorded oh, or they said they did i don't know it's very weird no oh, yeah they're probably keeping that for their personal collection those those punks <laughs> mm -hmm. okay looking at your portfolio if you will on imdb i didn't realize that you had had so so many um i had you know knew of even Savage Streets, I don't think a lot of people even realize that that was you in Savage Streets. Um, 
but going back and seeing like even how the last couple of decades you've you've been very active so i mean kudos to you you have been you know impressively just staying on the ball with working now if somebody came up to you and said i haven't seen any of your things what are some movies that you were most proud of like projects i know you've produced uh, yeah. are there any are there any that you're like i'm really proud of these projects this is what i would encourage you to go watch i would say i'm really proud of return of the living dead and sorority babes in the slime ball bolorama and I, I like ones like Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers and um, uh, uh, ones like that. And there's one that it has never been released that's really cute called The Girl I Want. And I don't know why it's not going to be released or it it needs to be. Okay. And, and in anything that's been out in the last even, say, five, ten years that you can think of that you're like, actually... Yes, this is what I would recommend you go see. I think the Barn 2 is really good. Barn 2, I think okay. That's good. Well, and now you have me curious because that's the second time you've mentioned it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was fun. It was a total, you know, I'm playing this person that hates horror and, you know, just, you know, am like a not fun lady. And it's it's it was just fun to play that character. Okay, awesome. Now... Through the years, have you found that there are certain uh, other actors or creators that you found inspiration from when you were like pulling from that for a character of your own? Um, I liked people. My favorite actress is Nicole Kidman. I think she's amazing. I love her. Uh, I loved Brittany Murphy. I thought she was just great. Because she could do comedy, she could do drama, uh, and for for comedy, I loved Goldie Hawn. You know, okay. um, so those three, I think, are my favorites. Okay, that's fair. Good picks. Now, with you having started around the was it late seventies or going into the eighties? Yeah, late 70s. Okay. Now, going from there all the way to, to now, if you could, yeah. So if you think back to how things were on set, and we're talking directing, uh, we're talking, uh, you know, how many breaks you get, how has that changed really from the 80s to now? Like, how would you describe what that might look like to someone who's not ever really been on a set before? Wow, it's changed a lot. I mean, um, we were kind of flying by our, you know, by our hair, you know, pretty much uh, in the 70s and 80s and even 90s. We got away with a lot of stuff. Um, I think it was a little bit more creative. Now, everything is so politically correct and you know, if they have a, you know, simulated love scene, they have an advisor there and somebody that, you know, uh, makes sure everything's proper. And it's just a lot more strict. I don't think it's as much fun. Okay. With everything. No, with and, everything. And writing wise, you know, you are very limited because you can't put anything that could offend anyone in the script so it, it's changed a lot your freedom i could see that now do you have any desire to direct yourself i know you've produced you've acted i have directed i directed something that's hey stop it that's on um i think it's on is it on tubi or um youtube um called zombie games and i ha i love directing I love it a lot. Okay. It was really fun. Do you doing more projects that way? I would love to. I would okay. love to. I love working with actors. But well, yeah, I, had... I would love to do act, uh, directing. I think it's just so much fun. It's just a, just a whole nother angle in that whole creative realm for you, right? Yeah, exactly. Good. I'm definitely interested in knowing 
what you were into growing up, like what kind of music or show, just popular culture, what were your things when you were um, like a little girl? Um. Okay, I liked Michael Jackson and, and the Jackson 5 it was, and the Osmonds, and, but I like New York Dolls, you know, which was a punkish band. And I liked Kiss, and um, I think more the rock and roll people. Yes, I but like I that. Also, Please continue, I'm sorry. Oh, but I also like, you know, the Osmonds, and I had a crush on Donny Osmond forever. <laughs> And, you know, the, and, um, you know, the Jackson five, I thought they were fun. Oh, yes. I always and feel Susie like Quattro, Susie Quattro was my inspiration. Okay. Yeah. I was going to ask you who was your inspiration. Okay. But your music. Susie inspiration. Quattro. Yes. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Cause I feel like with like horror and uh, music, like definitely metal or rock, punk rock, they just go hand in hand. So I, I love hearing about all the music and everything involved with that. So you've, you know, your roles, you've, you know, you've been the punk rock chick, you've been, you know, and, you know, the doting girlfriend, you've been like the real girly girl wanting to look good for the boys. Yes. Um, <laughs> of course. You so, said that so good. I like it. So I, I practiced. <laughs> you did good. Thank you. So I just, what role have you done where you like really connected with it and it was kind of came more natural for you? Like you really, you know, identified with. Oh boy, that's a good question. Um, probably sorority babes in the slime ball bolorama. Okay. I would say. Okay. Because <laughs> definitely not Suzanne in Night of the Demons. I didn't identify with that. Mm -hmm. I didn't identify, I mean, parts of trash, but, you know, not, you know, wanting to die and all that stuff. Yes. <laughs> the horrible outlook on life. Uh, oh. So I would say Sorority Babes in the Slime Ball Bolorama. Okay, very cool. All right. And then I know this, I always like talking about, you know, just how, failures lead to wins or victories so were there any roles that you auditioned for that maybe you just didn't get or they slipped by oh yeah i auditioned for howard the duck i didn't get it oh my god she would have been i, I, in I was really like so upset but i heard it i never saw it but i heard it wasn't very good <laughs> It's it's good for the nerdy people. The nerdy people enjoyed it, but yeah, I don't I don't think you would have. There was a scene where it was like, I think she's gonna, you know, she's gonna sleep with the duck. I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's probably good you didn't. <laughs> I oh was like, kind of looked that way. I was like, anyone else so, see that upon Howard the Duck? I remember watching that, and I was like, they're in bed together, and she was kind of in like a a nightgown or a, a nighty, oh, no. and I was like, are they about to sleep together? <laughs> That's Creepy. Oh my yeah, god. So that's the only You're thing a I was like, <laughs> Very odd. <laughs> oh my god. And then also I was up for a Howard Stern movie, The Private Parts, I think it was called. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think to play a Scream Queen and somebody with red hair got it or something like that. Okay. And mm -hmm. I would have liked to have gotten that because I, I when Howard Stern first started, I really liked him. Oh, yeah. I thought it was really funny with with the different people he had on the show, stuttering, stuttering John and all those people. <laughs> um, it was just a wacky thing. And then it got old. It was like, OK, you know, um, I'm trying to think I read for. Was it sh no, not showgirls. Wait, maybe it was Showgirls, but not for the lead part. It was like uh, some other part. Okay. That's okay. They were all good. <laughs> I love that movie, Showgirls. It's one of my favorites. <laughs> okay, yeah, it is. Yeah, it definitely is entertaining. <laughs> yes. Very much. <laughs> yes. Okay. I so still so bring it up all the time. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's true. That's I forgot. That's probably one of Wes's favorites, huh? <laughs> oh yeah it is, okay 
that scene where she puts lipstick and that is scary. That is like every guy's nightmare. Oh no. <laughs> yes. And then and then this Yeah. Did you see it coming? No, I don't remember. Not at all. Um I don't <laughs> know honest well, okay, because by then that movie had went so many different directions. That's true. I'm not going to say I didn't see it coming. I think he was just you were but at that point you were oh, what the fuck she going to do now? So I think yeah, it was really? yeah. Yeah, what's going to happen? <laughs> oh my god. It was that great. was a fun scene to do. I loved doing that scene. When I read the script, I was like, "Oh, this is great. This is dark." But <laughs> yeah, that now I I'm still a big fan of Showgirl. I had the VHS somewhere. Oh wow! You actually had the the VHS. Well, yeah, I think it's oh, out in the garage, VHS? probably. Oh wow! I have three VCRs. Okay, mine I, keeps breaking. I don't know. Do they break easy? Oh yeah. But, oh, uh, <laughs> that's why. Okay, because I keep. But I keep I might just and... I might just give you a VCR. Oh wow! I will I will pull I I because I I've got three or four. Of them. I went I had one. Remember when they came out the the double thing where you had DVD and VCR? That's all in what one? I have. Yeah, those are breaking. shit. Yeah, no, those oh, are shit. No yeah, yeah, okay. those <laughs> total pieces of crap. That yeah. being said, after that, I went to an auction and they were had like three VCRs in working conditions with remotes, I think. Oh and, my god! And and it's I incredible. bought all three of them, and might have spent twenty bucks on all three of them because that was you no. know they were, they were already going out of style, and I said oh, you know. My thing was at the time, actually, I was ghost hunting at the time, and I thought they would let me use my other camera, ghost hunting, and I said, I'll have something to watch it on. And now they're stacked under the spare bed in the next room. <laughs> well, at least they have a good place. Yes, and I, but I, am, I will give yeah. Linnea Quigley. That will be my offering to you at FrankenCon. Oh, good. Now you can be on oh a plane, God, though. Oh, my God, that's great, because I yeah. can watch B, B, C, I used to, like, tape everything like the conventions and stuff so i have like you know when kane was was like in his 30s and doug bradley and all these people from years ago like 30 years ago well we'll, get, so cool. we'll have to get richard down to a uh, um, franken con to, to ship it to you because i guess you're be on a plane and that would look really oh, stupid right. in your that's <laughs> It would look really stupid in your carry-on, but... I know. What the heck is she doing? <laughs> Reliving the 80s. <laughs> That's the best decade. Indeed. It is. It and is. I, All the kids say that to me when at conventions. Oh, I wish I was born in the 80s. I, I forget how lucky we really were, some of us, you know? To mm -hmm. grow up that I agree. Stuff. Like Wes <laughs> said, what a time to be alive. It is. <laughs> yes. I, yes. We had... I'm sorry. Okay, we had, and I'm going now. I swear, this is not just me being a goofball. I think we had the best music from, yeah. and not just from any single genre, but if you get in, and, and I can say that because if you watch a movie now, there's chance there there's going to be an eighty song in it. If you get in an elevator, yeah. there's going to be an eighty song. If you go to the grocery store, they're playing eighty songs. So, You're right. Say. It is the best music. It's calming. I feel like it's calming. It is. It is. And um, it's so funny to watch, like, the MTV videos they used to do then. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's so Back fun when to watch MTV them. was a music television. It was actually music television, right. yeah. Yes. Right. Exactly. That was fun. That was a big thing when MTV came on. Whoa. Yes. Do you remember sitting there wa waiting for the video that you liked to come on? Like for me, it was Def Leppard, Pour Some Sugar on Me. Of course, that was the '90s, but I would just wait, just wait like three oh. hours at my grandma's, wait for that video to come on. <laughs> See Joe Elliott in his ripped-up jeans. 
<laughs> yes. Oh, that is such a great video. Oh my it god, is. I love that song. He was so I've pretty. Got the cassette, or not the cassette, the um, um, CD. Nice. I'm definitely up for it with that that song and everything. Yes. Yeah. Now, it was an gonna, era. I'm gonna tell you my favorite music video, and it shows what a country bumpkin I am. But my okay. most memorable music video I remember from that period was, believe it or not, um, Karma Chameleon uh, by Boy George. And the reason Whoa. the reason it stood up my mind when it came on TV, I went, oh my God, that's the ugliest woman I've ever seen. <laughs> and that and that shows what a <laughs> dumb country boy I was. It took me probably months to figure out. Oh, that's, that's a dude. funny. <laughs> He was ahead of his time, though, wasn't he? Well, yeah. Very much. Yes. Wow. Yes. That's and, funny. And, oh, my but God. But then again, I think I thought the same thing when I saw um, Love is a Stranger in an Open Car with Annie Lennox, uh, the, the, the Eurythmics. Okay. <laughs> because oh, yeah. half of the half of that video, she plays a dude, and I went, that's kind of an ugly dude. So, You're you know. like, I'm so yeah. confused. <laughs> And now and here now I am. Things are more confusing. You have to call he, she, it, um, they, we. You know about people. It's it's so confusing now. Especially for uh, I can't remember people's names. There's no way I'll get their pronouns right. So yeah. No, I know. Yeah. No way. No way. Well, well, I hate to say it, but is lights with her lights being off. We're going to lose her in a minute anyway. Oh, no. And there's no other window to go to. I can't believe it. My, It's like I went to go turn on the light, and I'm like, oh, my God, my light's burnt out. And then I looked at the clock, and there was, like, nothing on it. I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> but so they've cool. been doing that here. They've been turning. They're, like, fixing the um, lines here. And... It, it they just turn off the electricity and it's like oh god why tonight yeah i'm just glad you were able to come on yeah super excited oh it made my night it made my night it gave me new faith in humanity yes. oh <laughs> right you, <laughs> well uh, well i had fun i yeah, am so thank you and i am still a, a big big fan of one of the most beautiful women that I've ever met. Oh, <laughs> oh, who's that? Well, you. Oh, I love you. Who's, Thank you. who's that? No, I've <laughs> seen, I have, I didn't actually get to talk to you in person, but I did get to see you. The only thing I will say, do you ever worry like the wind's gonna blow and you're just gonna take off into the air? You're so little. Sometimes I do, yes, <laughs> I do, yes. But I, I, I didn't realize it until I actually saw you in person. Then they have reading your bio and it says, oh, diminutive uh, Linnea Quickly. I'm like, well, now now they tell me. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, <laughs> it's been a fun ride tonight. I'm sorry that our fans had to listen to us bullshit for 45 minutes before we could get Linnea on here. But I am so glad you came on. I'm so glad you stuck with us, Linnea. And, um, oh, yeah. And I am looking. Anytime. I am so looking for, well, by golly, we'll have you back because now I'm just hooked. Um, we, uh, uh, next week, everybody.